Okay, so hello. Uh, I'm going to present the work we've been doing in NOVA with my advisors, Professors Nun Preguisa and Joan Leitão, which is entitled I Throughput Replication with Integrated Membership Management. Okay, so starting with a bit of motivation and context, uh, our work is in the area of consensus and state machine replication. Uh, which I don't believe I have to explain, that uh, it's the building block of many uh, practical replication systems and its performance is very critical to the operation of these systems and that's why many alternatives have been designed and proposed over the years. Uh, there are two very relevant ones that I want to quickly summarize in this presentation, which are multipaxes and chain replication. Okay. <coughs> So starting with multipaxus, in multipaxus we have a leader and in the classic multipaxus, uh, skipping the first phase, the leader, when he wants to propose something, sends to every other replica, in this case that yellow operation, and then every replica uh, broadcasts it to each other and then when we have a quorum of accepted messages, we can execute the operation. Uh, so, this has a small problem, that is the message complexity, uh, it uh, depends on the number of replicas. And then we have some alternatives, for instance the distinguished learner where uh, uh, the leader, or better the followers only need to deal with a single message but then the leader still needs to deal with the number of messages that is proportional to the number of replicas. Okay. However, Paxus has something very good, which is its entire purpose, is that it guarantees consensus, safety of consensus in an asynchronous network model. Okay, then we have chain replication. Okay, chain replication is quite simple. We have an ads, we have a tail. When we want to create an update, we just propagate it through the chain until it reaches the tail. Uh, it has this very useful detail that each replica only deals with a single message. However, it has its own limitations and we'll get there soon. Okay. <coughs> so entering a bit more in the context of our work, uh, while there are many consensus alternatives, there are two aspects which are very often overlooked, which are the performance of read operations uh, and the membership management. Okay, starting with performance of read operations, uh, or better yet, linearizable read operations, because just reading without any consistency is easy. Uh, we have solutions that assume synchronous models, for instance, chain replication that I just mentioned. Okay? And when I say they assume synchronous models, is because if you have a network partition, uh, they stop working. So in this example, if the old tile gets partitioned, then the rest of the system continues operating and the old tile will continue serving read operations uh, which will break linearizability. Uh, so to, to handle the asynchrony problems, okay, there are many solutions. Uh, the most uh, common ones are relaxing consistency which means basically not providing linearizable reads, for instance, Sukipa, or the alternative is adding extra synchronizations and costly communication steps when executing each read operation. Okay. So the other aspect that I wanted to mention is membership management. Um, that is something that is often overlooked in these uh, systems. Uh, being that most of them often say something like uh, we'll just plug Zookeeper there and Zookeeper will handle everything and it's trivial and everything works. Uh, we have uh, a series of counter arguments against this uh, in a way that we do not think this is a good solution. Uh, the first one is that fault tolerance becomes complex so assuming you have your consensus solution you're going to add some external coordinator on the side, but now you have eight replicas, but your fault tolerance is only one. And then you can say, but I'll just add more replicas to my coordinator service, but then you now have 10 replicas, but your fault tolerance is still only two. Okay, so 
uh, other problems is that you actually have to require complex integrations with your consensus solution itself. Uh, and I'll give you an example. If one of your replicas fails, uh, usually what happens is that your uh, coordinator servers will execute the consensus around to decide the removal. However, you have an asynchronous network, and so the decision of the removal is delivered in an asynchronous manner, and your replicas cannot simply change their views at will. So what will happen is that you'll execute yet another redundant consensus round in your own solution, which kind of defeats the purpose. Okay. Uh, and finally, there's been a quite recent study uh, that shows that uh, this kind of setups using external coordinator service actually turn your system more vulnerable to partition, partial network partitions. Okay, and I'll give you an example. What happens if you have a partial partition between some of your nodes and your coordinating coordinator service? Well, your correct replicas will be removed. Or in another example, what if you have a partition between your consensus replicas, but they can still communicate with a coordinator and you're unlucky and one of those that are in the smallest partition is the leader or primary or some sort of special role, well, then your system will halt because the coordinator service will not remove them. Okay, so all of this to get to our proposal, which is uh, a new consensus algorithm, which we call chain paxus. And as you can guess, it combines properties of both multipax and chain replication. Uh, namely, it uh, uses the correctness in a synchronous network that is provided by multipaxes, but it has constant message complexity. Now, this is not necessarily new, but then we go ahead and uh, our proposal uh, proposes the, the following uh, things, which are minimizing throughput of both reads and write operations providing local linearizable reads in any replica without any extra communication and integrating reconfiguration and fault tolerance in the algorithm itself. Okay, so showing our solution um, and starting by how do we actually write and commit operations. Uh, we, we have a simple setup with five replicas with a leader, which is elected using the regular multiplexus leader election. We want to write an operation. That operation is propagated to the leader, and then the leader will simply propagate it through the chain. However, when propagating to the chain, uh, these messages that are propagated can be seen as encapsulating multiple multipaxes messages. In this case, we encapsulate the accept and the accept docker. We do the same thing through the chain, but when propagating to the third replica, we already have two accept tokens, and so the third replica can execute the operation, and so on. Reaching the end of the, the chain, we still need to execute the operation in the first two replicas, and garbage collect information about the operations. So what we do is we send an acknowledge message back to the leader, which will trigger the execution of the operation and garbage collection. So now, again, this isn't exactly new. Uh, what is new is what we do next, and starting by providing local linearizable reads. Uh, a very brief summary of the requirements, basically to provide linearizable reads, we need to make sure that a read reflects the results of every write and read operation that completed before that read started. Okay. And the challenge here is reading from any replica without any extra communication steps. Okay. And for this, the chain topology uh, can be very useful. Okay. We have again another example. In this case, we have that green operation which has already been executed in the third and fourth nodes. And we have that yellow operation, which has not yet been executed anywhere. And now we have a read reaching the last replica. Okay, so summarizing the requirements, we're going to ignore 
completed reads by now. And basically what we need is to make sure that that read operation contains the green operation since it has already been executed before the read started. So obviously we cannot uh, uh, return the current state to the client immediately. Okay. So what our algorithm does is it stores the read operation, uh, it stays pending, and then it will be attached to the next operation that is received by the node. So in this case, the next operation will be the green one. So the replica will attach the read operation to the green one. Okay. And then basically we wait until, until the acknowledge of the green operation goes back, goes around the chain and reaches that last replica. And what this will do is basically make sure that each write operation that is pending or has already been completed in the chain will be executed before the read returns. Okay, so in this case, we waited for the acknowledgement and upon reaching the replica, we had already executed the green operation and we had actually already executed the yellow one, which is a bit stronger than strictly necessary, but uh, it also provides linearizability. Okay, so assuming we have a second read and now we need to make sure that this read contains the results of any previous reads, we still uh, the reasoning is the same. We execute the same algorithm. And by waiting for the acknowledge message, in this case of the red message, of the red operation, we make sure that every pending operation, in this case the yellow one, is pushed through the chain and reaches us before that acknowledgement so that we can uh, respond to the client. Okay. So, uh, the final uh, contribution of our algorithm is the reconfiguration. Okay, so it supports uh, dynamic membership management. Uh, adding replicas is not very uh, exciting, so I will show an example of removing replicas, okay, which is uh, important since uh, the failure of a single replica can stop the entire chain. Okay. So what we do in our algorithm is that replicas monitor the next replica in the chain. And upon uh, suspecting that the next replica fails, they will basically request the leader to remove that replica and that removal is executed like a normal operation, okay? except that when it reaches the replica that suspected the next one, that replica will skip the suspected replica and send message directly to the next one. So we still need to make sure that operations are delivered in order. So first, the second replica needs to propagate the green operation since it doesn't know if the failed replica propagated it before failing or not. And then it propagates the removal replica. Upon reaching the fourth replica, we have a majority quorum. So the failed or suspected replica is removed. Okay. If for some reason the fourth replica had also failed, then there is no problem. We just repeat the same procedure. We request the leader to remove the fourth. We skipped both suspected replicas since we have pending message for removing both of them. And we go straight to the next, next one. Okay. So a little summary of uh, what we do. Basically, our solution aggregates multiple access messages, which, in, which ensures correctness. And we minimize the cost of both writes and read operations uh, and are able to provide locally linearizable reads in any replica without requiring any extra communications to complete those read operations. And we also integrate uh, reconfiguration in the system, which avoids using external coordination service. Okay, so we have... Uh, we executed an evaluation of our system where we basically try to answer these questions. How does chain packs perform against the state of the art? What is the latency of red of the chain, which is a common uh, critique of chain topologies? Uh, what is the performance increase on local reads? And can we use this in a practical setting? Okay. So we have two different setups.
we implemented a simple replicated key value store, which we used to compare Shankbox against other state of the art uh, protocols. And we also tried to evaluate in a more realistic scenario, where what we did is replace ZAP which is basically Zookeeper's consensus protocol with chain packs, and then we compared that implementation against the original Zookeeper. Okay, we used the Grid 5000 test bed, we emulated clients with YCSB, and we measured the throughput and latency as observed by clients while varying the number of replicas, the loads, and the percentage of reads. Okay, and starting with the first setup, how does it perform against state of the art? Well, our conclusions were that it performs pretty well. Uh, and basically, the conclusion is quite simple. If we minimize the number of messages that are propagated and handled by each node, the throughput is optimal. Okay. So regarding the latency of the shine, uh, we executed tests using different number of replicas, uh, 3, 5, and 7. And our conclusions were actually quite surprising since with a low number of replicas, we can actually have a lower latency than other solutions. And then, as expected, when we start getting an higher number of replicas, uh, the latency starts increasing. However, it requires at least 7 or more replicas until it becomes a problem. But regarding local, local read performance, uh, we have a small test where we basically tested what's the performance of executing reads through the shine, and then the performance of executing reads using our local serializable reads protocol, in this case with 50% reads, and then with 95% reads, and the results were pretty satisfactory. Um, and it's also interesting to note that the latency overhead is actually uh, quite small. Okay. Another interesting aspect is that since the reads do not require any extra communication, by increasing the number of replicas, we actually increase the number of reads that we can execute. So in this case, with three replicas around 1,300, with seven replicas, we get to almost 1,600. Uh, the final uh, evaluation was comparing with ZAP. Okay, so what we did was we, test, we tested the performance of both our implementation in Zookeeper and ZAP using different numbers of replicas. And the conclusions were basically that our algorithm uh, shows higher throughput. And another interesting aspect is that while the original ZAP uh, the throughput decreases with the number of replicas. Uh, in, our, in our protocol, uh, the number of replicas has a very small effect on the overall throughput. Okay. We also did uh, some tests with read operations, uh, where we compared our linearizable reads with uh, strong reads in Zookeeper. Uh, where our reads were about twice as much performant. And actually, when comparing our linearizable reads against weak, Z, weak reads of Zookeeper, we, we can almost match its performance. Okay. And again, with uh, not very significant latency overhead. Okay, so just a quick recap. Basically, we proposed a consensus algorithm which combines some aspects of multipacks and chain replication. And what we were able to do was maximizing the throughput of both read and write operations while providing local linearizable reads without any kind of extra communication and integrating a reconfiguration and fault tolerance in the algorithm itself. Okay, and yeah, the paper is available for you. Check it out, of course, and I'm open to questions. Thank you.